Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to get into the next section of our final report. Here we can see we're in module seven. We'll be working with the strategic planning of this. Uh, for our activities, I have a brief slide deck on strategic planning, very brief. And there are a, a couple of videos here to help. We do have a discussion here. It's a strategy discussion. I'll, I'll go ahead and open that up for you so you can see what that's all about. This is Michael Porter. He is considered the grandfather of strategy and has some wonderful ideas. Students say this is a long video, but wow, it was well worth it. And I'm hoping you will feel the same way. Uh, I'd like you to go ahead and review that and comment on your takeaways in the discussion forum. And then also comment to two of your peers with some substantive message or post to them about their takeaways. And then really like you to consider Michael Porter's information for the final project. There's a lot of, it's chock full of great strategy. So if you're going to use some of his uh, suggestions from this video, then here is the reference that you would include in your reference list. And then of course you would cite uh, Porter uh, or actually it would be Stern. 2015 is because they are the ones who created the YouTube video uh, interviewing Michael Porter and his person. In-text citation would be Stern. You don't have to write the whole thing, just Stern, comma, space, 2015, in parentheses, after you paraphrase the information. Please stay away from quotes uh, only when they're absolutely necessary, but paraphrasing, please use your own words and then cite your source after the fact. So I would like you to include some uh, references from Michael Porter. After the discussion, we have our strategy, the draft strategy section of the as well, and then we move on to the P's model section. So when we think about strategic planning, it's really all about our goal, isn't it? It's our end goal that we're working towards. And we want to be absolutely certain that our business owner has a measurable goal, right? Something we can measure over time. And we can see when we've actually achieved that goal. Otherwise, how will we know when we've achieved it? So it is important to have goals that are conceptual and they certainly can be dynamic. So they can change over time. We may have a specific goal set to achieve a, maybe a certain amount in revenue. Let's say, for example, it's sort of shallow, but let's just say that uh, we have goals that are planned out that includes a set amount of revenue. Now, that goal could be dynamic where it can change over time. Suppose your company has almost completed that goal, have reached that goal ahead of time, then you, of course, you would make changes and increase that goal so that you can meet the next goal. So the idea of dynamic is fluid and, and it can change. And sometimes you just need to change direction as well. Sometimes you don't, you find yourself going down a path towards a goal and all of a sudden, you know, the road changes for you a little bit. So you need to make some changes. So it mustn't be rigid. Of course, it needs to be something that you can look towards and you work towards. And if, of course, your, your tactics are based on small goals, reaching that ultimate strategic goal. But we do need to uh, be mindful that we need to be flexible. So also part of our strategic planning should include vision, mission, and value statement. Now, many organizations don't have a value statement, but it is helpful to include it. And we'll go over that in the report. And we want to think about in terms of like priorities, certainly with our tactics, like what actions are we taking to meet those goals? And then we can prioritize the, the process of planning and where we prioritize the company's objectives and planning for those uh, specific goals. We also want to consider reviewing and revising the plan. Like I said, it's a fluid document. So we want to be able to uh, make sure we'll be working on the, when we finish the strategic plan, we'll be working in the P's model. And we'll go over that with you. So for this strategy section, we're going to be covering the business model canvas, a SWOT analysis, the customer factory blueprint, uh, among others. To write narrative for our SWOT analysis, 
but we will also do a at a glance table that will list these items. And I've started this for you and you can add the information in there as it relates to this particular business. You know, to recap here, uh, the strategy must be connected to key activities of the company. And let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. So let's just go ahead and look at the draft strategy section. What are we completing for the report here? So you should have completed the production section. And if I have provided you with any feedback, you should have included that feedback when you submit this strategy section, right? So everything is complete, ready to go. The, the introduction section has been edited if need be. And then now you're working on the strategy section of the report. And here's what you will be including. The entire strategy section, the mission, vision, value statement, the business model canvas, the narrative section, as well as the table at the end. And then the SWOT analysis, the narrative, and the table within the document. We'll stop there. After that would be the P's model, the sections and the P's itself, and we will go over that. What I like to do, and I'm hoping you will consider doing the same, is I go ahead and I be uh, and then now we're working on, you have this side by side that you can work with. And so, of course, the company is providing you with their long term strategic plan. Now, if they if it is not measurable, then you can include what they've provided you. But then you can add information on your own to make suggestions for making their long term strategy measurable so they know when they've achieved it. So this would be one of the questions you would ask the business owner is, what is your long-term strategic plan? I like to just use the template as my question section. I like to record my interview with the business owner. And then that way I have the recording and I can always go back. I don't have to type anything or write anything while the owner is giving me the information. I can just listen, pay attention and maybe ask uh, additional questions, follow up questions, but I have everything recorded so I can go back and I can put that in writing. But it's good to use this as a guideline for the questions that you will be asking the business owner. As I'm writing this, now I've just gone over this part, there's more, of course, there's pricing strategy and then there's the, the mission, vision, and a vision statement. These are very easy questions to ask the business owner where you can go back and fill in this information after the fact. But as we're filling this in, we can use this model to help us. Of course, we don't want to plagiarize, but it is useful to have something that we can see, well, what is a good roadmap to follow? So now when we get down to the statements here, we'll include that information. And that is from the business owner, the information they've given us. Then when we go down to the business model canvas, we have the narrative section. And here's an example. You can see what these students have done. Now I've made this very clear that the value proposition statement should include this, right? What you're doing here is you're putting in the product name or the name of the company, whatever works best for uh, your report. And then you're describing the value benefit. So please leave the statement as it is and just put in the product name or business name, describe the value or the benefit for the customer. Describe your customer. Who is the customer? And what is the pain reliever they need or the gain creator that this product or company with this value or benefit provides to this particular customer? If you want to, you may go ahead and elaborate on this information after you've completed, you will complete the business model campus at, in the appendix. And then you will make just very brief, short statements on your business model canvas table at the end of this document. But here you're having complete sentences, you're having a paragraph, you're explaining all of these items. Relate to these customers? How do you relate to deliver this value proposition to these, this customer segment? And you'll include that information. Uh, your key partners, who are your key partners in delivering this value for the, for the customer. You can see how it's the value proposition and the customer are the key elements of the value proposition 
the, within the value proposition of the business model canvas. So value proposition, customer segment, and everything focuses around that. And so if you keep that as your mindset, it makes it very easy to follow the business model canvas, but it also makes it very easy to ask the questions of the business owner. Sometimes business owners are reluctant to go into the cost structure. Other times they're freely, you know, here you are, you can have all the information, you know. So if they're reluctant to give you too much information or very little information, just go ahead and document that. And we go into our SWOT analysis. So we have some information in here um, where we go into our SWOT. Again, this is all narrative form and it is, we go down to our, our SWOT table. These are just very brief statements, very brief snapshots. So let's see, we have lots of narrative here for our SWOT analysis. When we go down to our table, we can see brief statements that are where you can look at this table and at a glance, you can actually just see what the SWOT analysis is made of. Um, customer acquisition cost and the customer lifetime value. In for some information in here, if they're not willing to give you this information and oftentimes they are not. Okay, we stop here when the revenue streams and the adjacent markets relate to the P's model. So that's all that's required for the strategy section. However, I just want to go down to show you that you want to populate the references. This is Ash Murray, who wrote the book Scaling Lean and produced the customer factory blueprint. So because uh, including information as it relates to the customer factory blueprint, we are including a Murray in our reference list. And if you decide to use uh, Michael Porter as your reference, then you would include that. And you would include a reference for uh, your interview with the business owner. So what does that look? The references are, are a little bit different when we're looking at a, a per, the business owner's first initial, last name, comma, and then the term personal communication is written, and then a comma and the date that you had the interview. And that's all that's required from that. And then these are additional, other additional. The Purdue Owl happens to be a really good one. If you, you could just search APA seventh edition and, uh, and the word reference, and then you will have other sources too. But Purdue Owl is, tends to be a good one. They have a lot of pop-ups, so you just have to kind of ignore those. But here you can, you can see uh, how to do in-text citations, uh, the, some of the basics and, and by authors. And then here's your reference list and many different. Now I put audiovisual media to get the view, YouTube. And so I scroll down to whatever it may be. As you can see, there's film video, there's uh, other, another language, TV series, so forth and so on. I came down to YouTube and here it tells me how it should be done. And then I just copied how it was done. And then when I went into the, uh, the course under the strategy discussion, I just went ahead and added it this just the way it is when I uploaded that working. All right, I think that's about it for the strategy section to it. Thank you so much.